This man is the most. His name is Cool. I'm game developer for as long as I can remember, for very, very long. And I'm Yola. I'm game development, a uh, game developer for not very long, just three years. And I, and he does temporises. Thank you. Thank you all for the introductions. Now we can start. As I've said in the introduction, I've, we are going to talk about the truth. The live will not be just about 2.73. That one is an update that is coming in Flash next week. But now, we will talk about more long-term things, about novelties that are coming in Unity, but also have something to do with the Unity, uh, but with the true fair. Now, let's start with the presentation about the new content in the True Fair. First of all, magnificent illustration, right? I just needed to uh, highlight that. Uh, the True Fair is a cross-game thing. Uh, sometimes there are references to Dofus Touch, sometimes there are Dofus. Anyway, you get it. There's a little bit of everything. So on 273, what is there exactly? Cool, tell us. As far as I'm concerned, I'm talking only about the True Fair. I don't know what else you've got. Before talking about the introduction, let's talk about the navigation in the area, the big changes that have happened. The area was quite old and it was not necessarily easy to get to it. Uh, there were some um, impasses, areas that you can't get into, some uh, areas where you had to circumvent them. And also, also, for people who have done the 20 year anniversary, one of the most annoying things was access to the true fair. There was no zap. <laughs> you had to take mine. You had to take a thousand mile away zap and then get <laughs> So, sorry, you can't get it right. <clears throat> so, essentially, the geography of the area has been slightly modified. It will still be around the same size, but the movement within the area will be much more fluid. And there is a new zap that has been added to facilitate access to the area. Uh, so, all all the uh, passageways and things like that that were blocked, we have smoothed them out. And we've done some work as well. When you get into a map, you're able to identify what you have to do in the map. So the attractions, the attractions. So there will be ints, I don't know what that is, that will indicate mini games and tell you what is happening on the map itself. So, let's talk rapidly about this. We'll answer your questions at the end, but we have already presented a part of what we have for you today. We've presented it in a dev blog so that you can get ahead of it, uh, get familiar with the topic and know more about it. And it allows us more time to present in exclusivity some new key, new cool things about the game instead of just the basics. So, the vote about the uh, mascot of the True Fair. <laughs> Everybody in the panel is discovering, aside from Rebek, what the new mascot is like. So we're all discovering live now. During the 20 year anniversary, there was a, an NPC that would ask you which mascot would you like to represent the true fair moving forward and you had a handful of answers and it allowed you to vote from your end and decide which mascot you wanted. So there were three, three choices essentially, but there were three main choices that people picked. The vast majority wanted to see the troll. <laughs> yeah. A good 65% of the votes here again. We talked about it last time with Papino. I don't have the exact results on their hand. I don't have the certificates or any lawyer to certify that these are true. <laughs> this is the data we have internally, 65%. Kwan Kwan and Shashas have uh, not been very popular. So this is the new Matt Scott that we will adopt. <laughs> the guy's having a laugh and he's saying he's so stylish. <laughs> and now we turn back to Cool to talk about the attraction, the new mini games. So. What will we be able to do in this true fair now? Do you want an exhaustive list? No, not necessarily, whatever comes to mind. So as you have seen, the the names there. So Daggers Throw, uh, the fish to the Quan Quan, Tofu Smash. So the a game where you trade the where you trade the cups. And there will be some new mini games. So um, Something about the gobble, like a lottery with gobbles or something like that. The Schaefer crit will not be coming back, sad. No, not for the moment, sadly. There, there'll be a good number of additions, but we will find out what the players will have to do for each and every single one of them. I have some presentation, hold on, let me get rid of the camera. It's more than a GIF, it's an actual video. This is a larva race. <laughs> <laughs> this is largely inspired from Temporis. Everything is done directly. There's no action to be done. You just pass your turn, but it's a random... 
If your larva wins, you get some tokens that we will talk about later. <laughs> I have another one to present, if I'm not saying whatever, it's the blob memory. It's a memory game. The most classic game. You have to find the doubles. I don't know if it's the fastest possible or in the less amount of tries, but with, in any case, you can see the memory talent of, <laughs> of the guy who... It's catastrophic. <laughs> I've struggled to find one, <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. There's loads of mini games. Maybe you have another one in mind that you could tell us about? Tofu Smash. It's a game. It's like the uh, top top, as he calls it. There's loads of tofus that come out, and you have to hit as many of them. Uh, you have the dagger throw as well, where you have to get them as quick as possible and in as least amount of time. The Mayosh, it's uh, the smash one, you know, the one that you hit with strength and try and get it up as much as possible. So that should arrive sometime soon. Oh, there's uh, also the wheel, the PNG wheel, NPC wheel to get a jackpot. There's a little win and the big win for those of you that are quite lucky. Knowing very well that the idea is to try and get an interest point on every map. It's, it's a big area, generally speaking, but we want there to be like 15 or si 16 maps or something like that. There's no attraction on every single map, maybe to turn. When we release, it will be like 9 or 10, but essentially in every map there will be an element of interest, attractions, NPCs, some uh, sellers for plushes and uh, cosmetics. Later on we will have um, uh, shops, but later on we will have uh, other themes, like spectacles, shows like we've had in Pandala. Knowing very well that, uh, as Kuhl said it, we will present the calendar with the timeline of the upcoming months and what to expect from it, from the True Fair. And that was for the attraction size. So how do we do to participate on the attraction? So first of all, you need to, to, buy, to buy a ticket to enter, which is 500 cameras. And every attraction will cost tickets, except one of them, which Yula will tell you about later on, which requires different kinds of tickets. And later on, you will win tokens. And these tokens will be common to all attractions. And you will allow you to buy all the uh, recompenses from the entire tool fair. So... You can gain generic tokens. Some people are saying 500 commas is not too much. We could in increase that to a million if you want. <laughs> so, in order to get the um, in order to get the cool cosmetics, you'll have to try hard the attractions a lot in order to get there. There's some where it's just uh, an odd or random number and others will require a lot more work. And I was talking to uh, Lada earlier. The goal is to create a new kind of space with many rewards that would be one of the biggest ones in the area. Wow, the largest in the game to make people come there because there are many games, um, uh, lots of rewards. Just to create a sort of new kind of reason for you to come. There are no quests, no dungeons, no fights, no nothing. You come here purely for fun. To buy cosmetics, to try some new games, a new type of content in the game. We want people to just come here every now and then, do some cool games and then just leave. <laughs> wow, he's reading a comment on chat. Uh, I have been waiting for this for 20 years so I can take my kid to it. <laughs> I forgot to specify that, but for the True Fair, there used to be a dungeon called Boostash Dungeon, which will still be there. It entered very well in the theme of the area, the haunted house and things like that, but we're gonna keep that. For now, Boostash Dungeon has not changed, but later on, we are expecting or hoping to enter the dungeon itself in the... Uh, token scheme but for now it's a fixed level but we'd love for it later on to be modular that scales with your level so we have to work on that we'll see what we need to do for that but yeah it's something that we we'll discussed as a version 2 of the dungeon as you specified earlier there was a comment a question will there be any new quests in the area nope there won't be any it will be just an area specialized for new kind of attractions so this is it for the big lines of the true fair i will turn back to yola to talk about one attraction in particular one attraction 
that will bring its novelty, a lot of novelty. We've done a dev blog entirely about it to try and present it. The, um, the ramifications of having this, the novelties it will bring, and all the work that we've had to put in to bring you something this cool in game. First of all, the illustration is stylish, as you can see, yeah? Thank you very much for highlighting that. <laughs> and in essence, the Gla Gladia True has the same name as Dofus Retro. But as we've said, it's an attraction that is quite different from the... Uh, it's the biggest one. It's different from the old one, but it's the biggest one. We've mentioned a ticket earlier that is slightly more expensive. It's the Gladia True ticket, which will cost, will cost not 500, but 5,000 cameras, which will have also... Uh, new tokens that will give you bigger rewards because it's the biggest attraction It will have a higher ticket price to enter and it will give you higher rewards Papino's asking how much how much 5,000 Papino's losing his shit in the background <laughs> Exactly gladiatrol. What can you tell us about it? To begin with gladiatrol is a, an exclusive area to Unity, which will not be in Flash. In Unity, there will be a new building, top right of the Trull Fair, where you will be able to access the Gladiatrull. And how it works essentially is, it's a fight, special, special fight. For those of you who have come to the convention and Japan Expo, you will have seen a little sneak peek of this, sneak peek of this kind of fight that we are able to realize thanks to the Unity port-in. It's really a uh, mishmash of a minigame and a troll dungeon. Because right now we have trolls, but they're completely useless, don't have a single dungeon of their own. So it will be an attraction with specific um, rules. If it's a fight. You have to deal damage and kill the enemies, that's the idea. It's a wave fight, but not as you know it in the dimension. Not that it. So there will be custom waves, as you will see, you will see later. I don't know which point do we spoil, but we will spoil so many things, don't worry about it. One of them is discovering, as we are. The idea was to bring uh, the talent, the dev blog that we posted yesterday, was a reason to... Uh, I think he's going to show us a fight. In a dev version with cheat spells that they have access to as developers, but they will show us a fight, or I hope we, they will show. Us. So how does it work? How does the fight work? So the fight is doable up to four people maximum. That's the maximum number of players that can enter. But it's not doable one. You can't do it solo because it's virtually impossible because of the difficulty. At three, we are struggling, but four. That's where it's designed for four people to do it. In essence, in essence, you can go and do the fight with whatever character, without gear, just like retro. You just enter it. I think it's level 50 or something like that. He doesn't know whether it's 50 or... You can go without any gear or anything. You can go whatever class. All you have to do is pay 5,000 cameras, right? And go with friends. Because the moment you enter the fight, at the start of it, you will be able to pick an archetype to not reuse the term class because you will reincarnate something unique that has its own spells. You won't have your own spells. This is what is happening here. You will have new spells depending on the archetype that you pick in the fight. This is for the archetypes. And depending on which archetype you pick at the beginning of the fight, some things will happen. Some things will happen. Let's let's talk straight about rewards. No, no, let's go back and talk about the rewards later, not, not immediately, so soon. So essentially, in the fight, many things will happen. Before we go there, we want to go pick up a question from chat. Uh, it's, uh, there will be three archetypes, so you could have four of the same one. You could have four acrobats or whatever. You, you decide on which archetypes you want to pick. We've tried various different compositions, everything gets it done. Some of them are more obvious that you can use to farm, but this you'll be able to discover on your own later on by trying. So essentially within the fight you will see that many things will be happening that you don't normally see in the classic Dofus. The first one is... The first one is the spell choice that you have seen at the Japan Expo at the Ankama Convention. But it will be a bit different, it won't be... Without spoiling too much, you'll have choices to make at the level of the spells. But it will be 
a diff slightly different from uh, the Japan Expo and stuff like that. And the choices you get depend on which archetype you pick. So the acrobat will be the one that has spells more. So dompteur, acrobat, and magician. The uh, dompteur, the ulcer, is big damage and stuff like that. The acrobat is uh, a class that is more oriented towards placement and you see it will be quite useful for the mechanic of the fight. And the magician is one that is uh, oriented uh, uh, reduction, debuff, heals, buffs. So you will see you hit hard but the monster hit also very very hard. And the new functionality again we've talked about it earlier or in the dev blog. There will be objectives to pick and realize and do. This is quite similar to the challenges that you see in Pandala, for example. These are specific, uh, specific challenges depending on the monster family that you're fighting. It's not quite like that, but they will happen inside the fight and they will change in the, in the fight. Yeah, so it's like a challenge, but it arrives in the fight. And doing these objectives will make you win new spells. They can make you win new things without spoiling too much but essentially you have to do many objectives in the middle of the fight that will change your gameplay and the advantages of these things are they're never the same you have a choice of objective every time and the choice is common to the entire fight so you can choose which objectives you want to do during the fight the moment you validate one they lack like votes uh, are they facult uh, it's optional but at your risk and peril <laughs> an objective delocks a spell and does things to the boss so if I can summarize the moment you have to choose an objective everyone picks their objectives and the objective that gets picked the most um, that's the one that gets validated and the moment you realize that one a new one appears and you have to vote and stuff like that Papino is asking is there is there one that gives us a thousand AP? Oh, that would be really cool But what I forgot to say is at the level of that uh, You have it gives you the option to either enhance your existing spells or have ultimate spells some things that are crazy strong But one use single use the moment you place it it disappears from your bar <laughs> For example, there's a spell that that is called uh, think fast the moment you use it, it gives you a thousand AP. Next turn, it gives you a thousand AP, but then uh, only 15 seconds to play a turn. What? So for those of you who know the reference, you know the reference. I'm not telling you more about it. Some people know the reference. It's like Doom. Okay, people in the chat are saying Doom. That is hilarious. <laughs> and there's other novelties in the game. So uh, random things that will happen during the fight that are completely random that will spice up your fight. So little glyphs in one cell that will change your placement so that you can go and pick up a bonus for your team. I'm not going to say too much, but there will things that will be happening during the fight at random just to break the monotony and it's not similar, similar, similar every time. Something else. Again, the last one, thing, last thing, there is there is a zone of danger that is permanent in the map. You'll see very quickly the moment you start to fight or you see the map that there is a zone of danger that will be very useful for our enemies and for your allies as well. We will see this later. We've seen the map earlier that could have given us an indication. So, a lot of novelties for one fight. Because it is a mini game, it's not a dungeon slash dungeon fight. That is, it's like a taster of the insane stuff that we're bringing next year. So we're trying a lot of stuff. It, it showcases all the crazy stuff that we want to bring in the future. We've talked about it on the dev blog. It's what we call the game scenario. It's this thing that allows us to bring about uh, permanent glyphs, new functionalities, new traps, st stuff like some cool stuff that we want to bring next year. Uh, like the Tofu Smash, for example. This tool that we're using now to do, uh, it allows us to rework other attractions and uh, bring it to fight. So now, when you do a fight on Flash, you're, doing, you're obliged to do a fight 
against an enemy. So the moment I want to do a fight with enemies, I'm obliged to put a monster that will summon Tofus. Whereas later on, when we have game scenarios, you can do a game on your own against some things that can happen. So it brings up a lot of novelty that we're looking forward to. And here again, the Gladiator rule will be able, you will be able to test it for a long time during the beta. It has its own share of risks, problems, bugs in the middle of the fight and things like that. But it's coming very soon and the beta is the perfect time for us to test this. Uh, we will see the system, what works, what doesn't work and see in the future what kind of new content can we bring on the basis of the new functionalities that these things allow us. We've talked about it on the dev blog. We've mentioned there's some dungeons that can be slightly modified like Gobble Dungeon. So on the basis of this uh, scenario, so that, oh, like the little fire in the four, the four uh, horsemen, the um, aurora in the um, vortex. So all the summons, all the cool things that are specific to some fights or where every time we had to worry about it being a summon of the boss and be a passive of the boss. Now we can do things that are not linked to the fight, but will be linked to the fight generally, which is crazy, crazy good. That's really cool. I'm seeing a quick question here or a message in chat. Can you tell us about the um, the mama troll? Who is she? What can you tell us about it? It's pointing. She's there. But Mama Boss is Mama Troll is the boss of the the Troll Fair. We won't tell you anymore. She's the boss of the Gladiator Troll. You can see it already up there, and we won't tell you any more about it. The Mama Trollette. <laughs> La Mama. Right. I'm going to retake the timeline so we can talk about access to all these new content that we've we've mentioned it in the dev blog, but there's one point that is really important to re-talk about right now, which is the access of the gladiatorial area. And first of all, hey for my birthday, I'm getting something for my birthday. Oh, we don't we didn't talk about the rewards. Let's go back, let's go back. Let's 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 listen to you now. Go on. So, for the, re for the rewards of the GLAD, there are no achievements. Let's just say this outward. There are, no ch there are no achievements before people ask me why. Because the moment you put achievements, some people will feel the need to do it. And here, we don't want it to be uh, an obligation. Because these are mini games. We don't want to force you to go and do them. So, there are no achievements. For the rewards, however, there are some. We've put many cosmetics in place. So when you pick an archetype, it will transform your character and you can have some cosmetics linked to the archetype. And there's so many of them. There's a rare drop in the fight, which is really cool. You don't see rare drops. It will make it so that more people are incentivized to go and do the fight and do it a lot to try and get it. And of course you get tokens that you get from the Gladiator troll that you can use in some shops in the troll fair. We have percentages. It would be stylish. <laughs> Oop. There, there won't be any achievements, but there are rare drops, you can buy cosmetics. So for the access timeline, it would be Thursday that the true fair will be accessible in the beta on the Unity servers. You'll be able to test them, you'll be able to see everything that we've said, with the exception of the Gladiator rule itself, which will be accessible 12 days later on the 24th in the beta. As you can see, when Yola will do the fight, there's still some need for modifications and some betterments, some balancing is required still. We're doing internal testing and we want to balance the fight best as we can before releasing it to you. As you can see, your character has 30,000 HP, you'll see this. So also on the beta, we will use the feedback, what you do and stuff like that, to balance it after we decide on the normal balancing on the release date. So we are really hoping to get more uh, feedback from you guys so we can uh, make it as best as possible. But rest assured, we're doing lots of internal testing and play testing as well. So 17 September is 273 flash update and as we've explained there will be modifications on the area the zap the gameplay a good part of the attractions that you'll be able to access and play like we said the gladiator won't be accessible on flash 
but there will be loads of novelties that will be added with this fight that we won't be able to add to Flash as well. The interface on Flash makes it impossible to bring the Gladiator fight on Flash, so we've reserved it uniquely to Flash, to uh, Unity. And then, the 13th of November, the next date, will be the second part of the latest novelties that are coming on the True Fair. There will be some NPCs, some uh, sceneries, some new animations to make the area more animated and alive. And then later on, December, it will be the final version, the V2. It will be the complete version and will be put on all servers with the Unity release at the end of the year. Here again, you'll have all the attractions from the V1, you'll have the Gladiatrol, you have all the rewards, everything that will come with it will be released. So that's the last point. It was important to specify... Uh, the 24th September, we wanted to stress that you won't be able to test the Gladiatrol Thursday, uh, the day after tomorrow, where we release the Troll Fair. So there will be no Gladiatrol and we need you to know that. Before we look at, at Yola hitting some Troll, I want to... Um, I want to use this time right here to add, uh, as we said in the introduction, there's a dev blog that we have published exactly one hour ago about the signaling and um, um, we've talked about that earlier. It's uh, the report system in game. And to try and explain this better for you guys, uh, so it's clearer what we have in mind and things that we have in mind for this. So what is it exactly? Reporting, for those of you who know Retro Dofus, it's something that has been implemented in the game. It's the ability to report a player that you encounter during your gaming experience for various reasons, uh, whether it be uh, ha uh, harassment, uh, anti-gaming behavior, and some uh, specific like uh, Colosseum, like botting and things like that gathering bots and things like that. So the idea is to give the player the possibility to directly report some behaviors that you can see here while playing, so some behaviors that you encounter and give that to us. So as of uh, today, it existed, but it was incredibly tedious for you guys to report it, but now we've made it so much easy for you to directly access and without slowing down your gaming experience and without uh, being too difficult, five clicks away. So essentially, how it works is you will encounter some behavior, a game, or um, you'll encounter a player that whose behavior does not fit in the normal tip. If it falls within one of these, please do read them. If they're using uh, a software, uh, commerce, we've read all of these offensive that language links phishing stuff like that. so these seven things they justify reporting so all you have to do is click the character and there's a, an option on the drop down all the way at the bottom called report player and when the option is clicked there's this new interface that will come out that you can see here and it would be possible to pick from the seven options why is it that you and then a little description and give as much it's not it's not necessary for you to report but but all reports will be studied and will be manually looked at by a human being. So the more details you give us, the better it is for us to determine whether that is true or not and for it to be conclusive as a report. So once you press um, send, there will be a new pop-up that will come up that will ask you for your consent for us to use your screenshots and stuff like that. Because there used to be a verification step that requires the maximum evidence or indicators and indices or proof for us to verify the report and we need your consent before being able to use it. And the first thing that we rely on is conversations between players. And because when you're exchanging, all common channels will be shared in that screenshot. If you've sent MPs, it will be sent as well. Commerce channel, you'll see the writing. If you report someone that is writing in the uh, B channel or R channel, whatever. Discord, Kama, sales and stuff like that. This allows us to confirm or not. But there's the, the privacy. We need consent to be able to read stuff like that. As we've said, the uh, reporting will not be automatically processed. There will be a human person behind it that will always confirm or not the... Um, the report whether it's genuine or not because everybody can do it and we don't want it so that there's a clever uh, clogs that wants to ban his friend for x or y's reason 
a lot of because we know a lot of people will report their friends for failing a challenge <laughs> so i'm getting ahead of it. and i put it in the dev blog and i'm reiterating this please this system will work on the basis of trust for you and thanks to you and it's not to be used as a joke the less the more you use it as is it, it is intended, the better it will be, generally speaking. So avoid, while it could be a joke or the live or whatever, for us, it slows us down and it can harm the tool itself and its functioning, generally speaking. Last point, the objective. <laughs> we will add an, a, uh, a confidence or trust index. The more you do repair, reports that are later on confirmed, to be true and then we act on them the more points you will be uh, accumulating and the higher up you go in the confidence or trust index and it will speed up your future reports so the moment you put those they will be uh, prioritized and we're thinking of a rep an inverse trust index where if someone makes too many bad reports that shouldn't have been made they should have a lower row and the last one is the anchor box is coming to an end. This interface is the new way of dealing with this. Anchorbox is no more, it's dead, it's gone, we'll no longer look for it for reports. While talking about this subject right here, um, if there is a report and there's a ban that comes out, we will not tell you whether there was a ban or not. These things will remain internal, these things will remain secret. And even if you think that a player is legit to be reported we say we still need to do a verification a human verification and we need proof and confirmation that it's true there was behavior that warrants a uh, a ban and sometimes it will happen that if we don't have enough proof we won't be able to ban that player some people i've talked to at the akama uh, convention and uh, during the uh, japan expo even if your reports are a priori uh, legitimate if we don't have enough proof to be able to confirm or not the ban we can't act on it because if we ban player when we don't have the certainty that they did actually violate the terms of services whether they were bots or something we don't want to do that we really don't want to know so similarly if you um report someone that looks like a bot um and tomorrow you pass by the same map and they're there it doesn't mean that we haven't looked at it it could be that this the time has not been sufficient for us to look into that but also it could mean that we've looked into it and we've determined that we can't ban that because we don't have enough proof so we uh we are trying to avoid please do avoid um also we do tell you that we've received a report and so if you chain signal someone or something on repeat because you think oh this has not been done we will send you a pop-up to say that we've received it we're working on it don't keep doing that so we've said everything that we have to say the best way to communicate with us about this topic is on the dev blog that we've posted it will be the best spot for us to exchange get your feedback your thoughts and things like that it is a topic that warrants debate a lot of chat uh, i think it would be more efficacious and better for it to be done in writing than in a live with fast moving questions as you can see here so that was all for uh, the uh, oh, oh hold on, hold on there's one last thing that we forgot I need to specify this because I haven't put it on the PowerPoint here, but I don't want this modification that is coming for next Tuesday to be seen as uh, we're trying to hide it or something. I will put it in advance during the next live. There's one modification at the level of, uh, still in link with the bots, a modification that has been uh, added in the uh, P2P areas, the subscribe area. For those players who are not subscribed will no longer be able to go to p2p areas let's go so you can't leave as troop if you're not uh, subscribed this concludes the presentation about the true fair and now we can talk about the 273 update we finished on a more serious topic but that that's pretty much it. it was more important for us it was important for us to cover everything we dropped the bombshell at the end. <laughs> and it's good that we have an image with celebration, confetti, happiness. Yeah. This is an image of uh, what the world would look like if people did not, did not report their friends for failing child. So now we will allow Yola to go and prepare himself 
to uh, uh, to go and prepare and get us the technical stuff necessary to put the fight for you guys here. But we'll take a Q&A, &A, Q questions from chat and show you guys what's happening. I'm not going to log four accounts on your uh, PC, but we will just want to show you how the fight works essentially. Uh, we were not, we're not going to do a legit fight because we're still working on it. Uh, we understand that Volcasaurus will be able to do it on his own, but we wanted to see. On his own, it's not going to be possible. You all is confirming. <laughs> Can we ask you questions that will put you in uh, hot water or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we need. Yeah, that's what we need. We were talking about rewards. Yeah, it's true. We have not shown a single reward or anything, but we want to show you first of all the archetypes. Skins event. Will it be coming into the game? It's not finished yet. I think it's the 17th or something like that, but it's coming. It's coming. When is the new Temporis? No idea. I don't know. For the 273, there will be no balancing aside from the balancing that we've done on low level spells. There was a change log, we've told you all about it. So principally, it will be some reorganization of the low level um, spells so that you can have one of each element at the start of your journey. So that there are uh, more interesting variant access early on. Aside from that, anything to do with variants, nerfs, buffs, Balancing, revamps, we can't really help you because we don't work on stuff like that. Uh, Rebe can answer, but he's not going to say anything. So there will be some for the end of the year for sure, he's saying. Shall we show the fight or not? Are you ready? I'm just going to show uh, the cool features. There's a question for you, cool. Will there be attraction which are PvP in the, ch in the uh, true fair? No, we're not bringing anything like that because it is something that um, is really hard to implement first of all but also it's uh, hard to implement and because there could be cheating. You could have teams that just decide to farm these things and there's no way to make them legitimate. We've seen it. We've seen some attractions that we've tried to do in the past. Some of you have trauma still from this but the booth ball and uh, it was quite complicated. It was quite complicated. I'm not going to say any more about it. <laughs> Thank you very much for this presentation. I feel without your cheat spells, it might have been a bit hard on your own. But I hope that it has proven that it's quite complicated. It was generally to show you the new features that we have on the Gladiator tools that are coming. And uh, sort of position your expectation about what needs to be done, the kind of fights they will do. Here we have uh, access to Unity as game developers. It opens so many doors for us. We can do different things than we, we used to be able to do before. We can allow ourselves to show you fights like this. Is it not going to be heavy and stuff like that on the pop-up and stuff like that? But it's one fight that will be like this. We do tests and it, it, they will all be interesting, but they will not all be the same and they will not be heavy on your machine and things like that. Other rewards? Can you tell us more about the rewards? No, we're not gonna tell you about the rare drop. We'll let you discover. No, we're not gonna tell you about the rare drop. But there is one. How many ogreens for the dev tools joke? How do we manage initiative? It's a really good question. It's a complex topic that upsets me a little bit because to not get too much into the details of it, but essentially you can go without gear and it's a limitation of uh, in the fight when you turn into that uh, without getting too much into the details, we can't really change initiative mid-fight. It's something I'd love to be uh, to add, but we can't do that. Now, if you want to manage initiative, you have to do it old style. You'll have to change it with bread or adding HP to your stats and stuff. But what I would really have liked is depending on your archetype to change in the timer so that always the acrobat plays first, then the magician, then the tamer. Or that somewhat, or that people would be able to choice. Yeah, but what don't you see? If you want to do something else for that particular fight, we'd love to give you more tools too, but we don't have many tools within Dofus to give you facilities like that. As a first, if we can, 
yeah, if we can sort of have a hand on it and yeah, not so now all style. There is no physical tool for us to give you to manage the initiative, but yeah. It's not a game breaker or anything, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. You lose some optimization, but for those of you that really want to optimize game turns and stuff like that, it's a bit more complicated for you guys at the moment. Question for you. Is it expected over the long term to add new archetypes more than, than just these three two? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing, nothing in the plans right now as we speak. That was the reception of the games, whether there would be uh, a sort of trajectory where uh, you'd add more. If there is a high level of demand on it for this feature, we might think about adding a fourth, but right now... No. It was designed for three archetypes. It's not an hour of development like I've seen in the chat, but no. How many spells per archetype? The, the spell, uh, base spells. Every archetype can gain up to seven spells. After that, they're all enhanceable and ameliorable, and every spell has a a variant, an enhanced variance with the uh, the glyphs that you stand on that allow you to improve them. And unique spells, about 15 or something around that, maybe a bit more. Yeah, around 15, something like that. Which gives it a little roguelike format that is cool to play. A bit different from Infinite Dreams, but mini game style. Difficulty wise, is it balanced so that it's a high challenge or that it's accessible for pretty much most people? Uh, difficulty level, ideally, if you do it at three, that you want in some challenge and you don't have to make any mistakes to win. Do play in four. If you've played a minimum to the office, you should be able to do it. The first one will be complex because it's new mechanic. Game mechanics that you're not used to seeing, you don't know them. There's nothing like it in the game, so nothing prepares you for it. So the first one might be a bit of a, a little bit of a shock, complicated to try and understand everything. So it might take you some time, as we have seen when we've done some tests internally. The first fight is always complicated for everyone. Second one, you understand. If you understand half of the features, at least it allows you to focus on the ones that you don't know. So you do better, generally speaking, on the second one. But it is what it is. The problem is. Uh, the balancing is not designed similarly for a convention fight or as it is for something for in that will stay forever in the game. For the Japan Expo, the convention, it's a fight that we want you to sit down and understand very quickly and easily because you've queued up those people. So we make it more easier, more accessible. Here, it makes sense for you not to understand it from the start. You're going to do it twice, three times, and then understand it. And then ideally, it's for you to test all three archetypes and understand the objectives and spells and all the combinations and all various things that you can discover as part of this new game mode. I hope I was clear when I was explaining there. I understand. I understand what you're seeing, what you're saying, but let's see. Uh, some people are uh, saying, "Will there be um, an infinite kind of mode to see where the highest score is?" But the idea is not to give you all the features now and then. That's it. No, we want. We don't want them to rival Infinite Dreams. We want to keep the features separate. So. This is multiple fights, uh, but yeah, we don't want them to rival each other or cannibalize each other, so we've separated them. And what we want you to understand is these are customized vase, which means with customized waves, you can't do infinite numbers because they're not automatic. They have been designed before they come into the game. Whereas with the, the infinite dream, it's a feature, you give it a piece of code and then it randomizes as it goes. So the two things are different. Why can we not do 7 or 8? Because it's difficult. Because this is not a classic dungeon. If I'm doing a fight at 8, I have to balance it for a fight of 8, right? So, if you're 3, you'll never do it. If you're 4, you'll never do it. 5, 6, never be able to do it if I balance it for 8. Dungeons are much easier because you have uh, modular monsters that get added. And even then, if you do 4 versus 8, it's not... Uh, yeah. Dofus historically has always been like this. Uh, us, game developments, 
we try and balance towards four rather than eight because for four to eight there's a massive difference eight becomes either too hard or too difficult and for those of you who play will know we can't really bring the experience that we want with that kind of balancing balancing for eight or it's really really hard to make modular pv i'm more of the team of balancing uh for uh, health points i don't like this i don't find it for a fight like this it's too easy to just eight let's just multiply by four the health points and that's it it's balanced i don't like this i'm not a big fan of this type of balancing for fights of this nature so no technically i could have done it but no nope i don't like it <clears throat> but it's already complex to balance a fight so that it's hard for three and doable at four or feasible easy at four it's already hard to do that apparently it's our job why can't you do it why don't you make it here yeah. but our job is also to do fun stuff if you find that pv bags health point bags multiply them for difficult then you're not thinking along the same lines as we are we don't think we want to balance feasibility something we can do with something fun for you and for us to make I'm just being honest there. <laughs> Is there an interest to do it at three? No, not really, not really. You don't gain any more rewards. If you can't find the fourth, we've just designed it so that it's yeah, fourth place. You can just try it at three. That's why there are three archetypes and the fourth player can pick whatever archetype from the others. It's a really good question as well. With the previous fights of the Japan Expo, to not take uh, base uh, HP and base tail and just times everything by 10, yeah. Uh, it, it's a bit silly. You see that your character is doing 10,000 and you think, oh my god, I'm doing too much, but it's just 10 times the base of your... Yeah, it's just a visual reward. Big numbers, Wee! You can see that you hit 10 billion and you're happy. But if you hit two, it's the same. It's literally the same. It's just not the same level of satisfaction. <laughs> That's so true. I like balanced fights, uh, balanced damage. I don't like big numbers. And yeah, this he's saying that uh, he's okay with our characters dealing as much damage as we do now, so a balanced level. But when you are an altered version or doing a special fight like that's fine. It's fine. So if you're doing conventions or um, special events, it's fine. We can modify health points and see big numbers and crazy stuff like that. But in any case, if you do infinite dreams and you reach far, you will see big numbers. That's, that's your spot to go and find them. It is moderators that will receive your um, reports. I've just taken a question that is completely unrelated. But <laughs> I've spotted it, so why not? A system to find three build. It's called the guild. It works really well. It's well tested. Discord as well. Having friends. <laughs> right now there's no matchmaking in the Gladiator rule. Otherwise it works for multi-accounting. Yep, yep, you could do it. Yep, it works. If you're on a multi-account server, you could just do four. But good luck managing choices on four accounts when they pop at the same time. I've tried it. He's tried it. It's just... Oh, it's just a you think, uh, yeah, you, you find that you have choices on another account and you've completely forgotten about it and it's just so annoying. Yeah. It's a bit hard. On top of rewards, there will be consumables they will be able to buy at the true fair. It's not just cosmetics. There will be a lot of new... Um, I think we will do a completely new revamp of consumable and I'd love for us to do it before the new servers so that we have new clean consumables for everything to be standardized. So we had some consumables at the troll fair right now that was too strong. Some people were... Uh, ah, so when professions get really hard, people will rush to get to the gladiator troll and get the same cos uh, consumables to level up their... Uh, so we'll need to rebalance even the consumables because there seems to be some really strong ones. Shadow, will we be ha we'll have Gladiatrol? Shadow mentioned, let's go! <laughs> no. 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 We won't have it. I don't know what he means, whether it won't be... 
If it's non-lethal, then we will add it, but uh, no, no. It's like pushes and quest fights. Normally you don't die. In oh, so it is in shadow, but you don't die. It is on shadow, but you don't die. It is, it is on shadow, but you don't die. Oh, there's a dreams revamp. Someone is saying a good message. Thank you for picking up my idea that I've put on the forum ages ago for you to read away. Thank you very much for that. Ah, so it's not coming towards the end of this year. Papino's spoken about it. They want to modify the system a lot. But sadly, he's saying, I really want to do a revamp, a rework of uh, Dreams. They're going to look at the Gladiator rule, what has worked, what hasn't worked, the new tech they have. It's still a very thorny, a big project, big investment. We have to know a lot about it, and it's really tough. We have a list of things that we want to redo, but it's not going to be for the end of the year. We have a big whiteboard of things. Uh, breathing, professions, guilds, dreams. Uh, also, for dreams, we have to be able to manage the existing, because some players have some crazy runs that have been going for years. It's an elitist feature, as some would say, yes, but it also regroups people that know a lot about the game. We can't make it too accessible because those uh, those who play it exclusively and stuff like that uh, will not want to play it if it becomes too accessible. The more elitist, the more hard it is to balance things like that. So it's not coming for the end of the year. It's more towards the beginning of uh, next year. Some guys surprised them by saying, uh, please don't touch breathing. Like, what? Don't touch breathing? What? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the feedback that we've received in phase one of the beta were, was interesting. So, do you want me to take a question now? Yeah, they were talking about dreams, so you picked that one. I'll let you pick one. They do look alike, maybe they're brothers. All, the, all your questions about classes, we're not gonna answer them. We don't work on classes, we don't know anything about them. It's Crocus and Itzis, and they're not here. I can't answer for them. Or I can tell you some random nonsense, but we don't, we don't know what's happening. It's a project that we don't work on them. Don't even try and ask. We don't work for those. We don't know anything about them. People want to see the timeline again. There are some questions about season on it. Are you able to put it up for, up for us? IT, IT people, please. Ooh, Gladiatrule. Inter-server. Ladder. Ooh, he said it's not matchmaking, sadly. It would have to be matchmaking for it to work. Uh, we have the same problem with um, the booth ball. You've worked on it. The problem was uh, accessibility. Ah, <laughs> He's saying, sorry, I don't know anything about that. I was, uh, I was uh, an intern back then. <laughs> maybe the feature will, maybe the feature was completely different, some matchmaking and things like that. For those who says, if we say matchmaking, we need a critical mass of players for it to work and for you to be able to match. But we don't know anything about whether it will be that or not. So the more we have matchmaking tools like that that require a critical mass the more we divide the player base matchmaking works very well for match for pvp for pvm it's up to you go find three friends and do stuff like that it's fine it's fine yes the one in the middle uh sevi he made it he worked on it yeah so v1 will be in the flash version v2 you will not see it on uh flash version so there were some npcs that will uh, either be activated or deactivated i don't know that all the mini games will be available on thursday there will be a lot of them but there's also the transition from phase one to phase two uh, that we need to keep an eye to make sure that the transition is done well and we'll try to open it as fast as possible on the uh, second phase normally it will be the 12th but we will keep an eye on uh, our progress People are asking about the Japan fight. I've spoken about it earlier. Adding a Japan Expo fight in the real game is not balanced 
to be a permanent feature in the game. If we had to bring this fight and the one from last year, we have to redo them for them to be interesting over the long term so that it's not one game that you do twice, three times, get it out of your system and then completely ignore it. And I've said this before as well, the score does not exist at all. It only works on the Japan server server. All fights have a score, every single fight. So the whole server is only used for the display of the score and we don't have that on the normal server. I think we've covered everything. Do you want to pick one last question? I thought I saw a question in English, but then it ended in French. In most questions, they don't have an answer to when is the Alliance revamp, when is this revamp or that revamp, they don't have the answers to all of those things. I'm not going to force you to pick a question. Can we see the uh, gobble spinny wheel? <laughs> Where it is? Uh, I can't tell you much, but there will be one piece of reward that gives you a percentage of what you get from the overall reward. Uh, every about 2000 people, there will be one big winner. And there will also be on top of that a mega jackpot that will be filled up and when it reaches a critical level, somebody will win and it will be massive. How long is it going to take the gladiatorial fight? 20-25 minutes from beginning to end. If you play fast. Haram. <laughs> Should we do one last, let's scroll that last question. All right. Thank you very much, cool. Thank you for being here, both of you, present, helping us present everything. Thank you all for uh, those of you that have tuned. Just to remind you all, the 2.73 will arrive on Flash on the 17th of September. And starting from Thursday on the beta version, the Gladiator will be testable starting from the 24th of September. And on the official servers from the end of the year. And to talk about this, the that's, that was for the 2.72. Three, and then we have the um, report button that we've introduced. There is a blog post. We encourage you to talk to us about it in there, put your ideas there. And please, we encourage you to not signal or report your friends for failing a child or an achievement. Please. The functionality we hope will work. Uh, us more than you, or as much as you hope that it will be useful in solving a lot of the problems that you find in the game that make your life miserable. Anyway, you get it. This is all to conclude the live. Thank you very much. I don't know when the next live will be, but I will say see you next time. Take care. Bye. Peace.